and welcome back. So today we start working on adding fractions. We've done a little bit of prep work already, so we understand about things like common denominators and lowest terms. And today we want to add these fractions. Adding fractions is very similar to adding like terms, which we did a few lessons ago. So let's take a look at some of the similarities. Let's go back and look at 9x and 3x. And imagine for the moment that x stands for x-ray machines. So we have 9 x-ray machines and 3 x-ray machines, and certainly we can add these together. And you'll remember that we could do this because these are like terms. nine x-ray machines plus three x-ray machines will give us 12 of those x-ray machines or you know 12 x. To add like terms we have to add these numbers together and you'll remember that those are called the coefficients. And then we keep the same variable portion. And so what we want to do is compare this with what we do when we're adding fractions. So let's slide this up just a little bit and look at some similarities. So now we have 9 nineteenths and 3 nineteenths. So pretend this nineteenths is x. We can add these together because they are like terms. But in this case we have fractions and you know that we call these like fractions. because 19 is that common denominator. But just as you'd expect, 9 nineteenths plus 3 nineteenths gives us 12 of those nineteenths. So it works exactly the same way. To add like fractions, we add the numerators and keep the same denominator. So the numerator acts like the coefficient. It tells us how many of the things we have. And the denominator acts like the variable portion. It tells us what type of thing we have. So now for us, when we're working problems, you'll find that they ask us to simplify a lot. And with fractions, simplify means that we want to put fractions in lowest terms and if we ever have an improper fraction we would write it as a mixed number. So we'll go ahead and write improper fractions as mixed numbers. Sorry, as a mixed number. I suppose it could go either way, couldn't it? Depending on how many improper fractions we have. So maybe we'll just erase that part. Okay, so let's move on to an example here. We have 13 elevenths, sorry, 13 sixteenths plus 11 sixteenths, plus 9 sixteenths, plus 5 sixteenths. And if we were literally going to go by the rules that we wrote down above, we would add all of the numerators. So we have 13 plus 11 plus 9 plus 5. And then we'd keep the same denominator. So this is still a certain number of sixteenths. And when we put that all together, we find out that this is 38 sixteenths which is improper. So we don't want to leave it that way. So let's see. Um, 38 divided by 16 gives us 2 and some stuff. And we already knew the 2 means the whole number part. 16 goes into 38 twice. So the whole number is 2 and the fractional part, let's see, 16 times 16 is 32, subtract 32 from 38, and that will give us 6 
sixteenths. Now we're not quite done yet because the six sixteenths is not in lowest terms. Ooh, can't spell today. Not in lowest terms. Hang on a second, let me clean that up. That's pretty sloppy. There, that's better. So we know that six is the same as three times two. We know that 16 is the same as eight times two. Of course, the whole number stays, but then these twos, two over two is just one. And we're left with two and three eighths. So when we look back at what we did, the first thing we had to do is decide whether or not these fractions were like fractions, which they were. And the common denominator was equal to 16. So our answer here is 2 and 3 eighths. Okay, let's give this a try on the calculator because it's a little different. The first thing we would like to do is start adding some fractions. And as we look over here, this button, um, it says N over D. That's our fraction key on the third row, second one in from the left, or first one in from the left. Okay, so if we press the fraction key, we'll see a little template, and we'll just type inside the boxes. So we have 13. Use the arrow key to come down to the denominator over 16. Use the right arrow key to come out of the fraction so that we can add. Let's see, plus 11 sixteenths. Remember that right arrow key brings you out of the denominator. Add the third fraction, 9 sixteenths. And finally, we add the last fraction, 's that's not what I wanted. So let's go back and delete that and delete delete again and use the arrow key to come down there like that. All right, now we're ready. And of course we press enter. And you'll notice it's giving us an answer that is in lowest terms, so it doesn't look like the 38 16 we had before although we can see where it came from. 8 times 2 gives us 16 and 19 times 2 gives us 38. But this is improper and so we need to convert it into a mixed number and your calculator can do that. So we want to look right here. From the fraction key go one space to the right and a little bit up and you'll see we have numerator over denominator, a couple of arrows, and then something that represents mixed numbers. The u is for units and then numerator and denominator. That's the key we want to use. It's written in green on your calculator, so use the second key to access that function. And that's the fraction converter. And so we can just push that button and we'll convert the last answer we had. There we go. Into its mixed number form. Two and three eighths. Just like we wanted. All right, let's move on to the next page and try another one. This one starts out with some mixed numbers. And for me, when I have mixed numbers, I really like to write things vertically. So let's see, 24 and 29 30 seconds plus 72 and 15 30 seconds. When you're adding or subtracting fractions like this, you always want to start on the right-hand side. People want to start with the whole numbers because they like them, but that's not the proper way to do it, and we run into trouble, especially with subtraction. Whenever you're working an ordinary addition or subtraction problem, you always start on the right-hand side, and this is going to be no different. So let's see. We have 29 30 seconds plus 15 30 seconds. 29 plus 15, we can add those directly because we've got that common denominator of 32. 29 plus 15, let's see what we have here. Whoops, not 11. 15. This is why we use our calculators and our brains together. 
because sometimes we put the wrong thing in. So that will give us 44, 30 seconds. And of course, we can add the whole numbers. 4 and 2 is 6, 2 and 7 is 9. So we always want to start on the right-hand side. All right, so let's see. Uh, what's our problem here? When we look at the fraction, again, we see that it's improper. And we want to convert it. So leave the 96 alone. And just think about the 44, 30 seconds. 32 goes into 44 one time with 12 left over. So that's looking like this. And you know that a mixed number is just adding a whole number and a fraction together. So really what we have is 96 plus 1 and 12 30 seconds. So what we want to do is think about combining these whole numbers here. And certainly 96 plus 1 is 97. And then we'll look at the fraction. 12 30 seconds, is that in lowest terms? Well, no. So again, this is not in lowest terms. So we have to rewrite it. I've got a little space over here. Let's see. 12 30 seconds is the same as, hmm, I think 4 goes into both of those. 4 times 3, 4 times 8 is 32. And of course, these 4s, 4 over 4 divides out to be 1. So really, what we want to have is 97 and 3 eighths. Just so we can get the hang of things on a calculator, let's try this one as well. Clear what we had before. And if we use the n over d key, that will be for ordinary fractions, numerator over denominator. If we want something that's a mixed number, we need to get the whole number in place. So we'll use the thing right up here on the calculator above that key. That u stands for units. So second, and we'll access that function and see that now we can enter in a mixed number. So we have 24. Remember, use your arrow keys to navigate that template. And 29, 30 seconds plus 72, whoops, let's get rid of that, because you know that what I really wanted to do was add in that mixed number, which was 72 and 15, 30 seconds. So 779 eighths. Well, that's great, but it's an improper fraction and it's not what we want. So we use that fraction converter here, changing from proper fractions, sorry, improper fractions to mixed numbers. And there we go, 97 and 3 eighths. Excellent. Now I know you're all just sitting there saying, well, why do I have to learn how to do this by hand? Why not use a calculator all the time? And there are a couple of reasons. Um, I don't want to get into the whole, you might be stuck on a desert island without your calculator someday, but it's true, you might not have a calculator someday. But even more important than that is how others see you. When you are on the job site, you should have a sense of what the answer is going to be. And people are going to look at you a little sideways if you have to pull out your calculator to add one-fifth plus two-fifths. Because everybody should already know by the time you're out in the workforce that that's three-fifths. Okay. So, let's see where we're going from here. As we slide down to talk about unlike fractions, you know that this means that they don't have a common denominator. And for exactly the same reason that we can't add 7a's and 5b's, because they are not like terms. Oops. Oh my, that's a little sloppy, isn't it? Try again here. Not like terms. Seven-eighths and five-sixths also can't be added because they are not like fractions. Yep, 
if we wrote 7 eighths and 5 sixths as fractions. It's pretty easy to see that we don't have a common denominator. All right, 6 is very different from 8. Okay, so let's go back to 7a and 5b. We can't add those. They're not like terms. Maybe the a stands for apples, maybe the b stands for bananas, but we can't add 7 apples and 5 bananas unless we talk about them differently. If we talk about apples and bananas as being pieces of fruit, then we can add them. Certainly we can say that 7 pieces of fruit plus 5 pieces of fruit will give us 12 pieces of fruit. And that's the idea behind adding like fractions. We just have to rewrite them so that they have a common denominator and are describing the same thing. Or I should say the same type of piece. So let's scroll up a little bit here. And see what we can do. Um, we have 8 and 6. We'd like a common denominator. 6 doesn't go into 8, so we'll take the next multiple of 8. 8 times 2 is 16. Does 6 go into 16? No. How about 8 times 3? 8 times 3 is 24. Does 6 go into 24? Yes, it does. So 24 is going to be our common denominator. And you already know how to take 7 eighths and multiply this by 3 over 3 so that we end up with 21 over 24. And you also know how to take 5 sixths and multiply by 4 over 4 so that we end up with 20 over 24. So what happens is this problem that said 7 eighths plus 5 sixths now becomes a problem that says 21 20 fourths plus 20 20 fourths. We have common denominators. We can go ahead and add them. 20 plus 21 gives us 41, 41 20 fourths. 24 divides into 41 one time with 17 left over. And there we have it, 1 and 17 20 fourths. So what I'd ask you to do is pause the recording for just a second and try this addition problem here on your calculator. Make sure you've got the hang of it and make sure you can get the answer of 1 and 17 20 fourths. And then come back to the recording. Great. So let's flip the page and summarize everything that we've talked about so far. Adding like fractions is easy because all we have to do is add the numerators and keep the same denominator. Adding unlike fractions is almost as easy. We just have to rewrite them so that they have a common denominator. So the rules really don't change here. We just get to step, skip step one when we have like fractions. So there we go. We rewrite the fractions so that they have a common denominator. Once we get common denominators, we add the numerators and keep the same denominator. Always look at the answer and see if it can be simplified. Are there any common factors that we can cancel? Is it improper? Can we rewrite it as a mixed number? all those good types of things. Okay, so let's see. We'll give this a try. We have negative three-fifths. All right, this fraction being negative is not going to bother us. Same rules that we had before. Added two, five-thirteenths. What common denominator should we use? Well, five and thirteen are prime, so we can just multiply them together. And that will be our least common denominator. Five times thirteen is sixty-five. Okay. Um, you know, I think I'm going to write this problem vertically as well. This is just my favorite way to do it. So I have negative 3 over 5 plus 5 over 13. And I want to add these. And the reason why I like to write this vertically is because it gives me some space to find a common denominator. 
So the first fraction, I want to multiply by 13 over 13. And the second fraction, I would like to multiply by 5 over 5. And that's going to give me the two fractions with common denominators. So negative 3 times 13 is negative 39. And we already know that 5 times 13 is 65. Plus 5 times 5 is 25. Common denominator, 65. And of course, we can add those. Negative 39 plus 25. Remember how we put those things into a bowl? 39 negatives plus 25 positives. A little battle has broken out. We know the negative team is going to win. So really what we're doing is saying 39 minus 25. And that's going to give us negative 14 over 65. Negative 14, 60 fifths. It's not a bad plan to pause the recording here. Check this out on your calculator. Make sure it works, especially with the negative numbers. Come back in a few seconds and I'll be waiting. Okay, one more. I'll slide down to the bottom here and check this one out. Again, I like to write these things vertically just so it gives me a place to keep track of all of the changing denominators and it keeps my problem organized. So let's see, we have 18 and 7 tenths plus 4 and 3 fifths plus 9 and 7 eighths. We need a common denominator. Let's figure out what we're going to use. Um, I like to start with my largest number, and we'll just look at multiples of 10. 5 goes into 10, but 8 does not. So let's try multiplying 10 by 2. 5 goes into 20, 8 does not. 10 times 3 is 30, 5 goes into 30, 8 does not. 10 times 4 is 40, 5 goes into 40. Oh, and also 8 does. 8 goes into 40 five times. So the common denominator I want is 40. So here we go. Let's change these. We would multiply 7 tenths by 4 over 4. Multiply 3 fifths by 8 over 8, right, to get that denominator of 40. And multiply 7 eighths times 5 over 5. So when we rewrite this, now we have 18. The whole number is not going to change. And 7 times 4 is 28. And those are 40ths. That didn't come up very clearly. There. OK, your job is to convert the remaining two fractions, add, see what you get. Try this one on your own, and then come back in a few seconds, and we'll check it together. All right, so let's check your work against mine. Hopefully you checked yours with the calculator also, but let's see what we have here. The second fraction, whole number stays the same. The numerator is now 3 times 8, which is 24. The denominator, 5 times 8, which is 40. And the last fraction, we're adding 9. 7 times 5 is 35. And the denominator, 8 times 5, is 40. So just like before, we want to start on the right-hand side and add those fractions first. 28 plus 24 gives me 52. 52 plus 35 gives me 87. So this is 87 fortieths. We'll have to deal with that improper fraction in a minute. Moving on to the whole numbers, we have 18 plus 4 is 22, plus 9 will give us 31. Okay, so we look at the fractional part. It's improper. We're going to have to fix that up. 40 goes into 87 twice. That one's pretty easy with 7 left over. So 87 fortieths. Let me do this in green. This piece right here is really 2 and 7 fortieths. And of course, we want to combine that with 31 that we already had. 
So 31 plus 2 gives us 33, and the 7 fortieths is now in the form we want it to be. So there we go, 33 and 7 fortieths. As always, make sure that you can do this on your calculator as well, because if you make a mistake by hand, your brain will never tell you. Right? Your brain and your calculator are both tools. Let's make them work together. Have a great day. Have some fun practicing, doing your homework, and we'll be talking soon. Take care.